Welcome to this press conference where we will present this year's Nobel Prize in Chemistry. We will start in Swedish and then continue the presentation in English. And as I always say each year, you are free to post your questions in either language. Ja, jag heter Staffan Ormark. Jag är ständig sekreterare här vid Kungliga Vetenskapsakademin. Med mig har jag två sakkunniga kemister. Till höger professor Sven Ledin, han är ordförande i Nobelkommittén för kemi och som också kan svara på frågor kring kommitténs prisarbete. Och till vänster om mig professor Sara Snogrupp Linse, ledamot i Nobelkommittén för kemi som strax ska berätta mer om priset. Årets pris belönar sinrika mottagare på cellernas yta. Kungliga vetenskapsakademin har beslutat utdela 2012 års Nobelpris i kemi till professor Robert J. Levkovits vid Howard Hughes Medical Institute och Duke University Medical Center, Durham, North Carolina, USA och professor Brian K. Kobilka vid Stanford University School of Medicine, Stanford, Kalifornien, USA. Akademins motivering lyder för studier av G-proteinkopplade receptorer. This year's prize deals with cells and sensibility. The Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences has decided to award the 2012 Nobel Prize in Chemistry to Professor Robert J. Levkovits at Howard Hughes Medical Institute and Duke University Medical Center, Durham, North Carolina, USA, and Professor Brian K. Kobilka at Stanford University School of Medicine, Stanford, California, USA. And the Academy citation runs for studies of G-protein coupled receptors. Professor Sven Ledin will now give us a short summary in English. Please, Sven. Thank you, Stefan. Boom! <laughs> Do you remember the last time you got really scared? The dryness of the mouth, the heart that skips a beat, these are signs that your body is getting ready for flight or fight. Adrenaline surges through the system and it affects metabolism, circulation, respiration, muscle tonus and vision. It leads to an orchestrated response from the billions of individual cells that make up our bodies. It was known for a long time that adrenaline does not enter into the cells it affects, but an increase in the adrenaline levels on the outside of the cell leads to a response at the inside. Um, a receptive substance, a receptor, was correctly assumed to be involved, but the nature of this receptor and how it acted remained a mystery for a long time. Now, thanks to the work of Robert Levkovitz and Brian Kobilka, awarded this year's Nobel Prize in Chemistry, we know what this receptor looks like in the finest molecular detail. We also know that it's just one member of a huge family of receptors, the G-protein-coupled receptors, or the GPCRs. We know the mechanism by which GPCRs function, and we know how that function is regulated. Now, the communication between our cells is essential not only in times of fear, but in everyday life. And unbalance in this communication leads to unhealth. Now, a large proportion, some say 50%, of all pharmaceuticals used today rely on action targeting GPCRs. So knowing what they look like and how they function will provide us with the tools that can help us to make better drugs with fewer side effects. 
Thank you for these words, Professor Ledin. And now, Professor Snugrep Linse, you will give a more detailed presentation of this year's prize. Thank you. G protein coupled receptors sit in the membrane. They tell the inside of the cell what's going on on the outside. Thanks to the studies by Robert Lefkowitz and Brian Kabilka, we know how these receptors are built, how they work, and how they are regulated. There's a whole family of receptors that are built in a very similar way. They all have seven helices, spiral-like structures, here depicted as rods, rods, that go through the membrane. Therefore, they are also called seven transmembrane receptors, 7TM. In our body circulates a number of neurotransmitters and hormones, some of the names you may recognize, serotonin, histamine, adrenaline, etc. And these action via G-protein coupled receptors. The molecule to the left, adrenaline, binds to at least nine different G-protein coupled receptors in our bodies and cause different responses in different organs. So when the heart and lungs Muscles are activated at the same time our digestion is shut down. The molecule to the right is man-made. It's a beta blocker. It's similar to adrenaline, yet different enough that it only binds to a subset of the adrenaline receptors. Therefore, it only affects certain organs. Indeed, the G-protein coupled receptors are the targets for about half of all pharmaceutical drugs made today. And these are used in treatment of conditions like high blood pressure, neuropsychiatric disorders, Parkinson's disease, migraine, gastric disorders, you name it. Think of a disease and there is probably a medicine there affecting a G-protein coupled receptor. So the receptor sits in the membrane and when a signal comes here in the form of increased adrenaline concentration, the task for this receptor is now to tell the inside of the cell that this has happened. But it doesn't do so by letting adrenaline in. You can see no adrenaline inside the cell. Instead, the receptor binds, each receptor binds one molecule of adrenaline in a pocket on the outside region. And this leads to a change in the shape of the receptor so that it opens up a site in the inside where it can bind another protein, for example, a G-protein. Here it's depicted in red with its alpha, beta, and gamma subunits. The receptor is a little bit like a bundle of rods. When the receptor is not activated, the rods are fairly parallel to one another. And on the inside of the cell, there's really nothing to interact with. When a small molecule binds at the outside, rather small changes in the structure here propagate into a much larger change on the inside, where the G-protein can bind. This is also the reason another small molecule can elicit very different changes on the inside, which then signals through other proteins on the inside and other signaling pathways. The complex we see here is the active signaling unit. It is sometimes called the ternary complex because free things are needed to come together, the hormone, the receptor, and the G-protein. This has been known since the middle of the 1980s, thanks to studies using, for example, radioactive hormones, cloning work. Today, we know what this complex looks like in near-atomic detail. What you see here is a molecular masterpiece is the result of three decades of dedicated biochemical work at the bench. The methods derived to be able to obtain this structure by crystallography have now also been used and are being currently used to make crystals of a large number of drug-important receptors to derive their structures. The receptor in the membrane is something like a switchboard in the wall of a building. The operator of the switchboard speaks more than one language. Therefore, 
clients of different nationality can call the same switchboard, but the operator is experienced enough to send a signal in different directions depending on who calls. This is exactly like a G-protein coupled receptor. Depending on what small molecule binds to the outside, the signal is sent in different directions inside the cell. This is very important knowledge in development of drugs to obtain medications with fewer side effects. Each operator speaks only a limited set of languages. Therefore, a number of switchboards are needed to serve all the clients in the world. We have about 1,000 different G-protein coupled receptors in our body to be able to sense a huge number of different hormones, neurotransmitters, and other signals. <coughs> Some clients can call more than one switchboard. In our body, adrenaline can interact with nine different receptors and cause very different responses in different locations. G-protein coupled receptors are also found on the outside of our body in the sensory cells, in our nose, on our tongue, in our eyes, and this allows us to sense our environment, to smell, to taste, and see. Yeah, now I really need a cup of coffee. Thank you. There you are. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks to the G-protein coupled receptors, I can now really enjoy this cup of coffee. The smell the aroma, the beautiful serving, <laughs> neurotransmitters, hormones, many G-protein coupled receptors are active now. And thanks to the studies by Robert Lefkowitz and Brian Kubilka, I can also enjoy the excitement of knowing exactly in finest molecular detail what's going on in my body right now when many signals are passed over my cell membranes. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Snuggerup Lindsay. Uh, we will now see if we can get a uh, hold of uh, one of the two laureates. Uh, do we have Professor Levkovitz there with us on the phone? Yes, I am. <coughs> I am on the phone. Okay. Uh, congratulations again. I know it's, it's six o'clock and, and uh, Professor Snogarup Linz has already got her coffee. I hope that you have got the same. Uh, congratulations and uh, I tell you that we are sitting in the session hall here in Stockholm at the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences and we have around 80, 90 uh, uh, persons from Swedish and international press and I know that they are eager to, to pose some questions to you. Are you ready to, to take on these questions, Professor Levkovic? I am. Oh, okay, so please go ahead. Good morning, Professor. Um, my name is Victoria Dyring. I'm from the Swedish television. We are live on air right now. Uh, first, congratulations. How are you feeling right now? I'm feeling uh, very, very excited. Could you tell us, how, how did you get this message? Well, I was fast asleep and uh, the phone rang. I, I, I did not hear it. Uh, I must share with you that I wear uh, earplugs to sleep. Uh, and so uh, my wife uh, gave me an elbow. Uh, <laughs> Call for you, uh, and uh, there it was, a, a total shock and surprise, uh, as uh, I'm sure many before me have, uh, have experienced. Have you told anyone yet, or? No, absolutely not. Uh, uh, you're familiar with Skype. Uh, I, just before the conference started, I uh, got a Skype call from, uh, it was after the conference started, I got Bilka, uh, the other winner, uh, and someone I speak to very often. I'm calling to congratulate each other, but I couldn't take the call because I was on this. So as yet, we've told nobody. Okay. Have you any plans for today? Uh, well, I, I'm thinking that this is going to be a very, very hectic day. Uh, I plan to go to the office. Uh, I was going to get a haircut, but uh, I'm a... <laughs> Which, if you could see me, uh, you would see uh, is quite a necessity, but I'm afraid that'll probably have to be postponed. Uh, it'll be a, a pretty crazy day at my office. Uh, 
Yes, I think, I think you'll have to cope with that long hair today. Um, yeah. It'll have, have one more day. Have you been to Stockholm before? I have been to Stockholm on uh, many occasions uh, for scientific conferences and lectures. And will you be coming to uh, Stockholm in December? Yeah, I will be coming indeed uh, with, uh, with my wife, uh, Lynn, and uh, with his... Uh, I have a large family. I have five children and five grandchildren. Uh, so Great. I, I, I'm, I'm sure they won't all be able to come, but uh, for those who get away for it, uh, I'm hoping that some of the family will come. We look forward to that. Congratulations again. Thank you very much. Yes. Do we have some other questions? We have a question there. Uh, I have a question about these receptors. We were told not just now that they are the targets of about half of the, the pharmaceuticals that the drug industry make. What about them make them so useful in, in medicine? Well, I think there are several things that make receptors so useful in medicine. The first is that, as you probably heard, there are a very large number of these receptors, and they, uh, they serve as the gateway to the cells for many, many different uh, neurotransmitters and hormones in our body. Uh, as a result, they are crucially positioned to regulate almost every known physiological process in humans. Uh, and of course, as physicians, what we need to do in cases of disease is to manipulate uh, the activity of these uh, normal substances, substances like adrenaline, you've heard, serotonin, dopamine. Uh, and so I think it's the diversity of, uh, of substances in our body that work through this mechanism uh, that makes them so crucially positioned uh, to be able to uh, respond to drugs of various types. We have a question there. Hi, and congratulations, uh, Professor Lefkowitz. Uh, my name is Louise. I'm from the Associated Press. I'm going to ask you a very, very typical question uh, that we always get um, when the prizes are announced. Did you expect to win this prize and, or, or not? Just tell me a little bit about if you've been anticipating it or not. Thank that, you. That's a wonderful question. Let me, let me start with uh, the short term and the long term. In terms of the short term, uh, I was just commenting a few minutes ago about the fact that uh, if, if the committee has any questions about the, uh, uh, the, the extent to which their secrecy works, let me say it does. Uh, it did not have a single uh, rumor or inclination or uh, clue of any kind. Uh, that this, so uh, I can assure you I did not go to sleep last night uh, waiting for this call. Uh, so that's point one. For the longer term, sure, I think every scientist dreams in a little recess of his mind that maybe someday uh, one would get a call like that. But it's more fantasy than anything else. Uh, so uh, did I expect to get it? No. Uh, did I even have any inkling that it was coming? I would have to say no. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much. Uh, I think this was actually the, the last uh, question uh, for, uh, for you and, and from, uh, from the press. Professor Levkovitz, thank you very much for being with us here live uh, on the line. And, and we once again give you our warmest congratulations and we look forward to meet you in Stockholm in December for the Nobel Prize ceremony. So thanks again. Bye. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, so let's move on. Uh, yeah. Are there any more questions uh, from the press about the chemistry prize and, and the research involved? Uh, you can, as I said, give questions in, in either Swedish or English? If not, uh, it's time for me to, to end this press conference. Thank you for your attention and we hope to see you back on Monday the 15th when we will announce 
the Sveriges Riksbanks Prize in Economic Sciences and memory of Alfred Nobel. Thank you very much.